Hello to all of our dear, wonderful seedlings. Welcome to the Seed Group Podcast. I'm Carla. I'm Norman. And I'm Albert. And if you need any of our musical services, call 708-351-0333. And a very welcome hello to our producer, who this would not be possible without his expertise. Hello, Marcus. Hey. Hey. (laughs) And today we are celebrating a very special occasion, Father's Day! (laughs) In stereo. Right, thank you. (laughs) And to all the wonderful fathers out there, well, we just want to say thank you. I personally don't think fathers get their due. What do you think, guys, being fathers? I agree 100%. Me too. What he said. What he said. <laughs> you know, I, I think about the Shirley Caesar song, No Charge. Right. I love that. For those that haven't heard it, look it up, Shirley Caesar's uh, No Charge. It's wonderful. But it was about a mother talking about um, her son handing her a bill. And, and you know, she's talking about no charge for the nights I stayed up with you. And Dr. Did you cared for you, prayed for you. But Fathers have done that as well. Yep. You know, and my father loved that song because fathers have done that. Um, You know, I miss my dad. One of the things I really loved about him uh, among the billions of other things is how he was there through it, through everything, through everything. And I knew I could count on him, you know, for every play, for every concert, for every, you know, anything. I knew that. When I looked out there, he was going to be there. There you go. You know, especially when you came home late at night. Yep. You know, that was never my problem. I was dependable. I was always on time. Oh. <laughs> no, no I was a boring kid. I was always, I, I was always on time. They never worried about me. If they said be home and blah blah blah, I was there. Boom. Glad I never. Had you that. guys are probably different. Yeah, you're right. I don't know about him, but I know I didn't have a problem. I couldn't tell time, so I really wouldn't know. (laughs) (laughs) Uh What time is it? I have a question. Oh, has a question. I have a question. Uh, What what are you? Who are your top father figures that was not your real father? Like father figure outside your family? Oh, okay, that's cool. Guys, you can go ahead. I figured Norman go first. Okay. Uh, actually, and even though it may not be so popular these days, but Bill Cosby was one of mine. Okay. You know, okay. His, when you look at his shows, yeah. you know, before all <laughs> the mess about what he did or didn't do, you know, all that, mm-hmm. uh, there was a lot of thought that went in it. And he set up examples, yeah. you know, not the kind of slap in the face and not, this is the right thing to do. This is yeah. wrong. And, you know, it's like that. But to think mm-hmm. about, you know, put mm-hmm. yourself in a position of where this particular uh, skit or whatever is going. Mm-hmm. Uh, how you would be, you know, if you were the father. Mm-hmm. But how you would want your father to act if you were the son. Mm-hmm. Um, my father was my idol because he was a thought provoker, you know. Mm-hmm. He didn't have to go and take us, grab us by the arm, hold us up, and then whip us <laughs> in our behind like uh, they used to do with old, yeah. old rugs, you know. Yeah. Uh, they hit you, you Bernie, Mac, Bernie Mac used to say. You know, <laughs> he didn't have to do that. Uh, we knew he meant business. Mm-hmm. Uh, he meant what he said, and he said what he meant. And But yet he was patient. He was loving, uh, kind, and you mm-hmm. know, all the people around him loved him. And so, you know, that's kind of how I try to pattern myself. I like that. I reached it or not, I have to ask my son, you know, but yeah. otherwise. Let's see what kind of gift you get. Maybe that might be a measurement. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Big box. <laughs> 
Well, Albert, what about you? Well, personally, most of my father figures, people that I admire were mainly musicians. Mm -hmm. Every time I was doing something either in life, with my father not telling me certain things, being around musicians, they kind of told you everything and what to watch out for, what to do and not to do. But oh, okay. uh, that's the best way I could say it because the main thing, you know, I've always had people in my life that were strong men. And mm -hmm. one of my last real good father figures, he was really like a father to me because anytime I needed something or had a question about something, even at this age, he was a lot older than me. And he literally said, hey, do this. So when I was even sick, he told mm -hmm. me something. Everybody else said, no, don't do that. He said, I'm telling you now, you want to get over that? Get up. Get up. Go. Get up. Roll until you get to a chair. Get up. And I used to laugh about it. And it helped me a lot. You know, people said, man, you're really doing good. I said, yep. I had somebody that was right there with me. Constantly. <laughs> it's not my wife. Constantly. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I give her credit too. Mm -hmm. That's right. See, but, <laughs> but with me, I never had a, another father figure that I looked up to other than my dad. Oh, my dad was my superhero. Um, but I will say this though, who my father liked was James Evans of Good Times. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But played by the wonderful John Amos. And one of the things that he loved about him was basically because that's how my father was. My father was a fierce protector of his family mm -hmm. and the whole neighborhood knew it. You didn't mess with, you didn't mess with his kids, and, you know, and, um, and just loving and understanding. And you know, like I said, my superhero so much so that I like to call myself my father's third son yeah. because, you know, I, yeah. Cause I would, you know, you know, spending time together, I'd help him lay tile and, you know, do different stuff around the house and all that kind of stuff. And just love spending time with him, you know, even doing that or us driving the car. As a matter of fact, to show you how sweet my father was, I remember as a teenager, we went to the store. Don't ask me why I did this. We uh, had a can of pop and I guess it had gotten shaken up oh, and I opened it and exploded in the whole car. Oh, strawberry pop. I remember that. And my father, you know, I thought he would be man. He was just like, took a deep breath and, you know, and we went on, went home and, you know, we got it cleaned up. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. One of his favorite cars too. So, you know, oh, look out. I love you, dad. Sorry about that. So, <laughs> Marcus, what about you? Um, so uh, I, let, I allow a lot of um, father figures in my life. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but if I had to choose one, like just off the top of the head right now, for funsies, then this person is not famous right now, but it would be Will Smith. Okay. Oh, okay. Because coming up, um, I'm, 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 a, I'm what they call a hip hop head. And Will Smith, <laughs> yeah. Will Smith, uh, when he was the Fresh Prince, uh, before, mm -hmm. before the TV show, mm -hmm. uh, he would make me think of stuff. He would use bigger, bigger words than I knew. Yes, and he would just okay. see my mind on a on a whirlwind. But once I kind of start seeing who he, uh, the type of person he was showing on TV, it was safe. It was comfortable for me because um, I was all, I always tried to keep myself safe and you know tried to learn. Mm -hmm learn to lay the land wherever I went, learn respect, you know, and it was the way he presented himself in front of the, on the, on the TV screen, the way he talked. It, I always kind of knew, like, I need to keep, I need to keep words, like bigger words and have a calm demeanor, even though he slapped fire out of somebody on the TV show. Mm -hmm. uh, we all have our moments in break and that was a bad moment. He, he, should, he deserves whatever he gets for doing that. But um, to that point, you know, he, he was a pretty good role model, you know, and um, I look for him to do bigger things knowing, because I know he know I know he knows a mistake he made. Yes. And I mm -hmm. think that's going to be a big learning experience from it. But, you know, that's the type of person he always was. Like, he'll take his bad experiences, speak on it, you know, share it with the world, even if it's for show. And, you know, for, it helped me because I saw somebody I can relate to. Like, okay, mm -hmm. this is the type of person 
that I would want people to see me as, right. you know, in terms of like I'm mm-hmm. Marcus, but I have to put a public face on. If I have to put a public face on in my job or or with other people, that I put the Will Smith face on. If I'm not feeling good, like I just do the Will Smith act and just okay, you know, get it done. I do have another question for you guys, though, um, and this is kind of on the spot. Uh, could you tell me maybe one one lesson that your father taught you guys that you'll never forget? Ooh, that's a good one. Cool, but like, this is kind of yeah. I can go first on that. Yeah, biggest thing that the gentleman that I you know his name is Ed Shaddy. He's gone now, but the biggest thing he told me when I was sick. And some other stuff was going on. He said, first things first, got to take care of your health because no matter mm-hmm. how much money you got, it's not True. worth it if you're not healthy. Mm-hmm. And he, mm-hmm. like I said, he was 93 when he passed. Mm-hmm. And up until the time he passed, he was six months before that, he was doing all kinds of stuff, still doing stuff, mm-hmm. even at that age. And that's what makes me proud of the gentleman so much. Oh, love it. One of the best lessons he taught. Mm, I love that. Well, Norman, what about you? My father was one that always taught us to reason, use reason. Mm -hmm. Uh, My cousin, I think some of my brothers, you know, we were kids, and uh, one of my uncles had a Playboy, (laughs) and he left it someplace where we could find it. Uh, uh. He found it going, you know, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> didn't know really what it was looking at, yeah. but ooh, you know, just getting all mm-hmm. my father found it. Uh-oh. We expected to be hung to dry, you know, beat my like dirty rug. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, he called us all there, sat us down, took the book, held it up, opened the page. Mm. He said, would you want this to be your mother? Mm. Mm. And it's like, no. Mm -hmm. Another page, would you want this to be your sister? Mm. You know, the temptation is funny, you know, say, I wouldn't mind helping, you know. Then we probably would have died. Yes. With the reasoning (laughs) that he did with (laughs) us, you know, the... uh, we we lost some of the excitement, you know, mm-hmm. seeing women have dressed or not dressed at all. Right. And start mm-hmm. thinking about the person right. that is there, you know. And we started feeling sorry for them. Now we're we're still young, you know, but mm-hmm. the way that he did it, you know, it actually got a few brain cells working. <laughs> and so the magazines lost, you know, we weren't going around, you know, looking, oh, we, there's a Playboy, mm-hmm. Playboy or something. Mm-hmm. It was more, start looking at the respect the looking. for the woman to do that. And, mm-hmm. how, you know, probably don't even want to do that, but they don't mm-hmm. have a choice because they got families to feed or whatever mm-hmm. it may be. So, you, you know, so now we started looking at person, you know, trying to see the person on the inside. Okay. Judge them by what they may say on the outside, because if we don't know them, we don't know what they've been through. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's one of the things that's important for us now is yeah. stop judging people on what you see, especially when you don't even know them. When you don't know them. You haven't been there to see their story. Mm-hmm. Yeah they go through, what they're suffering through, what they're mm-hmm. trying to hard, the dreams that have gone and fallen, mm-hmm. dust and everything like that, you know, this is somebody that's trying to survive. And maybe that's somebody that could help them to survive could be you. But you I like that. Opportunity if you don't go and look for the person inside the person mm-hmm. you see. I like that. I like sense. that. See, what about you, Kyla? Uh, with me, I can think of a lot of pieces of advice, words of wisdom and all that. But the thing that just sticks out in my mind is how my father led by example. And one of the greatest examples is how my father loved my mother. Yeah, that's true. One, one of the most awesome examples and how 
um, he showed me how to be treated. I mean, he would take me out. Right. You know, he's supposed to be a first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, basically, you know, it's one of those things of showing me the example of how I should be treated as a woman. Yep. You know, and he showed me by when he took me out, you know, taking me out, showed me by how he loved my mother, how they were together. And, you know, I, I take that with me, you know, wanting somebody to treat me the way my father treated my mother. And he adored and loved my mother. That's so, so, you know, yeah. So that that is um, like I said, that's an, an awesome thing, you know, and that stays and sticks with me to this day. So, you know, what about you, Marcus? Because that was a wonderful question. Yes. Um, a lesson that I learned. Ah, um, I think of right off the top of my head, um, don't touch the hot stove. <laughs> 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 that, that goes for everything. That, that, that followed me everywhere in my life. You know, <laughs> don't, touch a, don't touch a hot stove, you know. Take caution, take precautions, be aware mm -hmm. the stove is on. Right. Um, you know, and that's pretty much follow me. Sometimes you got to touch the hot stove and burn yourself to learn. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't say I wasn't told. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so that, that followed me. Uh, I do have one last question. I'm sorry. Um, no, I love it. Yeah. Um, for the dads here. Uh oh. Um, he means us. We got a lot of new dads in the Glenwood, Linwood area yes. locally. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are seasoned veterans. You guys have seen a lot. Mm -hmm. um, seasoned. Is there is there a piece of advice that you can give a new dad? Or, or, or just a dad that's, you know, a dad with four-year-olds or 10-year-olds or whatever. Um, any, any piece of advice going through life from what you've seen that you, know, you can give advice to dads coming up? Uh, just because you fathered a child would not make you a father. Okay, man. You know, being a father means that you are there for their needs. You know, you are there for their needs even when they don't know what their needs are. Yeah. And um, the way that the, the movies now picture, man, you know, we're, we're tough, we're strong, you know, and, pull out a gun and shoot you and do this and that sort of stuff, you know, and kids see that and they start admiring that. And that's why you got all these little half wits, you know, midgets that are going around toting a gun as big as their arm, you know, shooting somebody. And when you ask them, why'd you shoot them? I don't know, you know. But we need the biggest responsibility that we have for as, as a father is to really raise our sons and daughters. You know, that doesn't mean that you let the TV watch them and then watch the TV. That means you become the living example for all these and get them to open up to you and you open up to them, you know. Like your father, you know, I mean I admire the guy and I never met him. But he knew what to do because, you know, you those are the people, those are the ones that you look for and want to find and learn from, first of all. But then if you don't have one doing that, you know, because either he's, you know, may not be alive or he's an absentee father, then they have to go to someplace else. And that may not be a healthy substitute. True. You know. We owe this to our kids. We owe this to our future, we owe it to our race, we owe it to the world, basically, is for us to constantly present a picture of what a real man is like, so that they know what kind of real man they want to be. And the daughters will know what kind of real man they want for a husband. Thank you. Not some midwit that's going to, you know, hit them, harm them. Thank you take advantage of them or anything like that, you know, prey on their weakness. All they're doing is just showing that they've got a weakness and it starts up here, you know. But a father should be somebody that your child or children can admire, you know, 
and seek wisdom from. So what are you going to do if you ain't have no wisdom? I agree with exactly what Norman just said. And like I tried to tell some uh, boys my house, I always tell them, I said, you know, the only thing I can tell you is that I love you. Mm. But I don't love you the way your mother loves you or your nana loves you. I'm a man. I love you totally differently. And I have to teach you how to be a certain man. So when you get older, when your children do something, you remember, oh God, Papa said that. Be patient with them. Trust me. I've been patient with you guys. You need to learn that because that's the hardest thing in the world to do. That's because one of them kids is going to do exactly what you did. And when you do it and you go to hit them and you go, ha! Back in mind, you say, I remember Papa said, think about it before you do it. Think about it. Be patient. Try to be knowledgeable as you can about the child because they want something from you besides just material stuff. They, mm-hmm. want, they want the real you to be there. That's right. So that's the part that you have to remember. Just because you're working a lot and doing this, providing this, they want you. If you didn't have no money, they still want you in their life. So that's the trick. You have to be there. Like Norma was saying, you know, you got to teach them. I it. love that. I love that. What about you, Marcus? Um, yeah, I like what the guy said. <clears throat> uh, I also uh, think that uh, new fathers should learn to have mm-hmm. empathy, mm-hmm. Uh, understanding, mm-hmm. and um, maybe one of the sleeper number one should, probably should be number one. You got to give your kids some attention. Like, yes. Mm-hmm. They are looking at you and they, they want to impress you. They want to show they want to show you that they know things and you know i think that's what's making made me real closer to my kids it's like kind of getting to what they like doing Mm -hmm. um and you know seeing that they've grown so much and you know like they want to see they want to see my eyes on them they don't want to see my eyes down right looking at the tv they want they want they want to stay in front of the tv (laughs) and do Mm -hmm. it so you just got to push pause or just yeah. give them that time, you know, to show because they try to figure life life out, and it's a long marathon. Oh God! Um, mm-hmm. So many lessons they got to learn. So that patience and understanding and empathy, along with giving them attention, and it's hard to do because you live in your life, you got bills, you got people outside, mm-hmm. it, you know, at your job and doing all this stuff bothering you, traffic and all that, you know. So, you know, just having that having that patience and understanding it is going to be good for the, I think it's going to be good for the dad himself too. just giving, letting himself off the hook. You know, sometimes you're going to make mistakes. You got to have that patience and empathy for yourself because I don't know if you guys see it, but a lot of us beat us, beat ourselves up over and we shouldn't, you know, we, we only know what we know right now, you know, right. and that's not to say that, you know, you should be let off the hook if you make a mistake. You know, you, you got to uh, take the L, too. But, you know, it's experience. And, you know, it's understanding, empathy, attention. And that's what I think. Yeah. I love it. Love it. Love the words of wisdom from, from the wonderful fathers. Thank you. So, you know, I want yeah. to mention one other thing, too. We're going to have to uh, get Norman to write us Father's Day song. because I was thinking that. The stuff we looked at, I didn't. Did we find anything that was actually dedicated to fathers? A lot of mothers, I mean, stuff, but no fathers, real stuff. I mean, you know, they have stuff like, like I love, uh, you know, dance. Well, I can't say I love dance with my father because it makes me burst into tears. But you know, something, yeah, uh, you know, uplifting, fatherly. Uh, yeah. I don't think we found anything there like was, that. There was a old song called "Calling Him Father." Oh, I remember that one. Oh, yeah, color him father, color him love. Yeah, okay. That's that's the one exception that was what, really, yeah. 30, 40 years. Yeah. Ago. Yeah, it's been at least. Yeah. That that's a cool song. I have to admit, I've heard that. That is a cool song. So yeah, you know what, Norman, you did find one. So yay. So we have to write a new one. 
We have to write a new one to add to that pantheon of two. Right. One after 50 years, we need two. Can we make it up? <laughs> yeah, make it up. Because the most thing like most songs are sad. Yeah, we don't want no sad yeah. stuff. You know, Papa was a rolling stone. Um, <laughs> no, no, that's what I'm saying. You know, you have these songs about fathers that are just like, oh, oh, that's not what I'm looking for. So, yeah. Oh, so no. that would be good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just I just played a graduation for two doctors this past uh, week, and it took mm -hmm. them because on the list we had different songs. All of them were upbeat, celebrating. We had a couple of slow ones, this, 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 and Papa was a Rolling Stone. I was went, oh no, 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 cut that one, cut that one. They said, <laughs> why? I said, trust me, just cut it. We don't want to do that one. Nope. After this. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh! It was fun. It, um, well, you know. As we bring this to a close, we want to thank all the fathers out there. Mm, love you, Dad. Ooh. All the fathers out there. I'm sorry, go ahead. I just thought of that. The father, his daughter just graduated, Dr. Hudson. Mm. She is a doctor now, and it's because of him who made sure all them kids did real good. And I'm so proud of her, but I'm also proud of him constantly pushing. That's wonderful. I, I knew it was something else I was going to mention about that. That's why I mentioned the gig. <laughs> That's wonderful. And congratulations. Yes. That is wonderful. Yes. Ryan Hudson. Good job. Uh, Good job. And to all the fathers out there, whether it's, you know, biological or those that have chosen to step up to the plate and just be a father to a child, children that need it, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Guys, do you have anything else you want to add before we close? Anything else? You stretch limits of my <laughs> creativity. There you go, creativity. Okay. And you oh. don't need no sperm donors, right? Okay. On that note. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. <sighs> yes, I'm sorry. Back to reality. <laughs> well, on that note. Mm -hmm. We want to thank you all for joining us. Happy Father's Day to all the amazing fathers out there. Um, and fathers, people watching this, if you like what you see, the content that you see, because there's more content that we have on our channel, make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate all of our seedlings, because if you subscribe, you become an official seedling. So <laughs> we appreciate all of our seedlings. And... For our wonderful seedlings, if you're a father, thank you for all that you do. And thank you guys for being awesome fathers. Thank you. And, and for all the children out there, call your father. Let them know that you appreciate them. And, <laughs> and for all the fathers that are planting seeds into their children, I'm so wrong, <laughs> planting seeds into their children, to go forward to their children's children. Oh, we say to all the children out there, plant a seed and watch it grow because that's what your dads have done. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.